Hi, my name is KD. Welcome to part three of the session on OCI Events Service. In the first two parts of, uh, of this session, we looked at uh, what are events, what is the OCI Events Service, why do we need events. Uh, we uh, looked at uh, the core concepts of the OCI Events Service, uh, events, rules, and actions. Uh, and uh, some of the uh, features uh, of the service. Uh, and we uh, looked at the IAM policies that you need to work with the uh, OCI event service. Uh, we uh, discussed uh, uh, the metrics that you can get from the service as well, uh, as well as some of the design principles that you need to keep in mind uh, when you uh, are using uh, OCI events. In this session, I'm going to start by uh, taking you to the OCI console and uh, showing you how to use the OCI event service by creating a rule uh, from scratch. Uh, I'm going to discuss some of the uh, use cases uh, that you can uh, implement uh, using OCI event service uh, and uh, finally uh, give you uh, an end-to-end -end demo of uh, uh, the, the service in action. I'm going to skip the first few slides because uh, these were already covered in part one and two. Um, I would encourage you to go back and review those uh, sections uh, if you want the full background. Um, all right, so let's start by going to uh, OCI console and uh, creating a rule. So I have logged in uh, the event service is uh, under the application integration part. Uh, the first thing you need to do is to choose the right compartment in which you want to work uh, because it's specific to the compartment uh, and then you can, I have an existing uh, uh, rule in place uh, but let's create a new rule. Um, let's say the a use case that I want to highlight is that when uh, an object is uploaded to a bucket, I want to uh, uh, you know uh, put that event in a stream or I want to get uh, notified. Uh, in the first uh, um, the first thing we need to do is to give it a name. So let me call it uh, uh, object upload. To, uh, uh, to a notification action. Uh, let's choose the uh, service name and then the event type. If you cho don't choose anything, you will see all the different events across all the services that are supported. Uh, but if the six services uh, we discussed are database compute, uh, there's object and block, volume storage services, networking and notifications. In this case, I'm going to choose object storage service and then the corresponding uh, events that you can write rules against uh, appear. Um, let's see, um, I choose this one. Uh, you can uh, uh, <clears throat> add conditions uh, to it. Uh, let's see that uh, I'll add an attribute uh, and I'll say my bucket name and uh, I have a bucket uh, name already that I provide here. Um, and then the action can be uh, sending it to uh, the OCS streaming service. I have uh, a streaming service uh, called uh, uh, FNStream. So I can add there, I can add multiple uh, uh, kind of uh, um, actions as well. So I have uh, uh, a notification uh, topic set up uh, as well. So I can add these things here. What you can also do is uh, validate your rules. This is a nice nifty little tool that you can uh, leverage to make sure your rules are acting as expected. And you can also look at some example policies uh, in part uh, two, we looked at uh, what an event actually looks like. It's based on the cloud events uh, standard from CNCF. Um, this is the event uh, envelope 
uh, which contains a lot of useful metadata uh, on the version and the event ID, etc. There's a timestamp. Um, it's this is uh, a JSON, uh, and then there is uh, along with the envelope there is the payload which contains uh, relevant data about the uh, uh, about the resource that generated the event and the event itself. And you can write uh, filters against it. In this case, you know, uh, bucket name for me is event dash demo. Uh, but this gives you a good example of what uh, different objects, uh, different uh, uh, kind of uh, events can actually look like. All right. So I just created uh, uh, this uh, rule. Um, now let's go back to our uh, presentation. Uh, so there are a lot of different uh, use cases uh, uh, that can leverage OCI event service uh, uh, in a nice manner. Uh, the key goal here is automation. Uh, anytime one of the six uh, event uh, source services that we looked at, uh, something happens or, a, or an interesting event happens there, you can take an action and uh, uh, the use cases can be anything from uh, security operations, IT operations, or, or even multi-cloud based on uh, uh, following the same uh, cloud events, uh, event protocol, uh, you can take actions in, uh, in more than one uh, cloud environment as well. Uh, it could be, um, uh, you know, examples. We're going to look at uh, th uh, three examples. But the thing I want, uh, the distinction here is there could be other kind of event-driven architectures. Uh, there is for uh, which which rely on events that work at the application tier. So applications also emit uh, events and you can do things like event sourcing kind of architectures as opposed to client-server architectures. Uh, and all those application level events can be stored in the OCI streaming service and then you can act on those. Uh, that's beyond the scope of this discussion because this is related to OCI event service and uh, and the six kinds of uh, services that currently emit in, uh, events uh, uh, that you can write rules on. Over time, you can expect uh, uh, more uh, and more services uh, to get included uh, both as uh, event sources as well as on the actions uh, side. I'm, uh, talking about these event sourcing uh, patterns for complete list of information not necessarily related to OCI event service for right now. Uh, but let's look at some examples. Um, the first one shows uh, that an autonomous transaction processing uh, instance is, uh, is uh, requested when its uh, provisioning is complete. A create uh, instance uh, uh, has happened and this event uh, if you can write a rule uh, in, in the event service uh, like the example I gave you uh, and then write the actions. The actions could be you can uh, invoke a function and this function um, is uh, can do uh, things like uh, running some custom scripts to create schemas or to import uh, some useful data into your uh, ATP database uh, to create tables etc. Uh, so this is a uh, really good from uh, automation point of view and uh, the same event can have an action that uh, leads to notifications uh, by email or notifications using uh, the OCI notification service uh, can send uh, pager duty based notifications or uh, it's, it integrates with Slack uh, as well and uh, you can also have notifications versus, uh, via the custom URLs with HTTPS endpoints. Um, so this shows you an end-to-end -end, uh, flow of a of a useful uh, uh, architecture pattern. Uh, quickly, a couple more, uh, you know, related to IT operations or or uh, or uh, DevOps or security kind of uh, use cases. Uh, on the top, you see that when a compute instance is is created. Uh, uh, it can lead to, uh, you can write a rule against it and that event uh, can now invoke a, a function and this uh, function can now check that uh, uh, 
the instance is uh, it's complying with all the security rules that you might have uh, that uh, you know uh, for example does it have uh, 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 you know public IP or if it's in a public subnet etc uh, and if it uh, uh, complies with it it's well and good if not uh, you know then uh, uh, you can act on it and for example you can um, uh, even kill it right so it gives you uh, an automated manner of making sure that uh, when a developer in your team is launching uh, a new resource so that it complies with the policies that you want it to comply with. Uh, another example is uh, your uh, logs in when they are uploaded in the in your bucket uh, in object storage service uh, it can trigger um, an event uh, and uh, based on, on that uh, event you can uh, uh, now uh, use a function uh, to integrate uh, with with the third party uh, uh, applications like Splunk or you can actually uh, uh, send uh, these logs to the uh, uh, streaming service and from there you can run analytics uh, uh, on, on top of it using an Oracle service or, or a third party service as well. So these were just uh, a couple of uh, quick examples. You can think of uh, uh, any other events that are interesting to you and, and then uh, any actions that you can take to uh, automate or do useful operations on these uh, OCI resources. But the demo I want to uh, show today, it uh, uh, involves uh, writing a rule that when a, an instance is launched or terminated uh, in your OCI tenancy, uh, it uh, launches or it invokes a function and this function then creates a new uh, object storage uh, bucket. Uh, and this bucket, for example, can be used for logging information for your data. In this case, I'm just going to show that launching an uh, instance creates a corresponding new object storage uh, bucket. Uh, I'm also going to show that uh, this creation can uh, integrate with notification service and you can get an, uh, an email that the instance was created or terminated. And finally, uh, this event can be sent to the uh, OCI uh, streaming service from where uh, different consumers uh, can then uh, act on this uh, event. So let's go back to the console. <coughs> I have uh, uh, pre-baked uh, a lot of this uh, uh, a lot of this uh, demo in the interest of time, but you know this is the uh, compartment I'm going to work on and this is the uh, rules I have and this uh, rule the events matching this rule are instance launch and uh, and instance terminate when these uh, things happen I take three different actions the first function uh, action is to launch a function this function actually creates uh, an object storage uh, bucket I have uh, another action that uh, uh, sends a notification via email uh, using a FN demo topic I've already created and the third one is I have a stream uh, in the OCS streaming service uh, to which this uh, event is also uh, sent. So let's uh, go and create a, a new instance. Uh, let's, uh, uh, let's create an instance uh, let's look at the name, it's called uh, 1319 in the end, uh, that the default name uh, is, the, is, the, uh, is the time at the end, so it's uh, 119 p.m. my time in this case for example, but uh, let me uh, quickly launch uh, uh, something, I'm just uh, uh, not going to use it so I don't really care much about uh, um, the the values uh, that I give here, uh, but you know the instance is now uh, provisioning, and uh, we can uh, look at uh, uh, some of the <coughs> uh, related services in the in the meanwhile. Uh, you can 
uh, go to developer services and uh, there is the uh, functions service here and this is the uh, the function uh, that I've already uploaded uh, you can uh, go to the integration service and uh, you have the uh, notifications uh, using the topic called uh, FN uh, demo that I've already created and it sends an email out and you know once uh, uh, there is some activity uh, you can see you know past activities are uh, are showing up uh, in the matrix uh, portion and then finally I have uh, the uh, object storage uh, bucket and uh, once uh, the uh, event service uh, uh, rule matches uh, and uh, the function is invoked it should create a new uh, bucket uh, here uh, shortly so let's uh, go back to the instance provisioning uh, page and see how we are uh, doing so the uh, instance just uh, came up uh, so let's see that if that uh, instance coming up uh, created an event that was already uh, logged by the event service or not Okay, I just see that uh, uh, right now uh, an event was actually invoked uh, and uh, you know, it shows there are three actions associated with it. So let's see uh, the actions, uh, what these actions did. Let me go back to the object storage service and you can see that my function has already invoked it created a brand new bucket with 1319 at the uh, at the end uh, let's go to the uh, to the uh, and notification service in this case uh, and we can look at the metrics and you see that a notification was already sent and then the third service uh, is the streaming service in streaming service i have this stream and uh, this stream uh, uh, should have uh, uh, some data you see that the metrics uh, are are coming in that uh, yes uh, at this timestamp uh, the uh, there was a uh, event that was uh, uh, that was created all right so that brings us to the uh, end of of this uh, session we looked at the uh, OCI uh, event service uh, and we uh, looked at uh, rules how to write some rules we looked at the three different kinds of uh, action resources that you can uh, invoke uh, we looked at some of the common uh, use cases uh, that can leverage the OCI event service and we looked at an end-to-end -end, uh, demo of, uh, of automation uh, using the OCI events service. Thank you for your time.